Hey guys, I'm Chris Buck and a very warm welcome to Friday Fretworks and on this week's episode I'm going to be throwing together a small pedal board for a gig I'm doing at the end of this month, this month being December 2019 for anyone watching on Dave Plus One and that is the Cozy Pal Birthday Bash at the Robin 2 in Bilston. Now the clip you saw in the introduction was actually a solo clip from last year's show which I played. Again this year I'm going to be part of the White Snake Band but just to give you a quick lowdown of what it actually is if you're not familiar with the name Cozy Powell. An incredible rock drama or just an incredible drama full stop that left us a long time ago now unfortunately but left an incredible legacy of musicians and bands that he played with throughout his time. Namely White Snake, Black Sabbath, Jeff Beck, Rainbow, Michael Schenker group, pretty much any big rock band throughout that era. Cozy probably played with them. So uh, much like many drummers all over the world, Bob Richards, the drummer in Buck and Evans, is a massive Cozy fan and took it upon himself last year to organise the inaugural Cozy Pal birthday bash, not only in celebration of Cozy's birthday, but as I said, his life, music and legacy, including, but not limited to, musicians who played with Cozy throughout his career, as well as prominent musicians who, much like myself and Bob, have an immense amount of respect for Cozy. So this year is going to be the second year. Last year was a roaring success, had an absolutely incredible night. As I said, I'm actually playing in the White Snake Band with Mr. Neil Murray and Richard Bailey, both of which not only played with Cozy, but were actually kind of members of White Snake at the same time. It's going to be a fantastic experience. I'm very much looking forward to it. So uh, with that in mind, I thought I would document the process of actually putting this board together for this show. If you saw the video I did around a similar time last year, again, documenting the process of what was going on the board and maybe what wasn't. A couple of lessons learned from that show. So uh, I thought it would be an ideal opportunity to sort of do exactly the same really but talk you through some of my choices and I guess ultimately the nitty gritty of actually putting a pedal board together. So uh, let's get started. So I've given it a fair amount of thought as to what board and what pedals I'm going to use. Now the kind of order of the day with this as it was last year to be honest is keeping it small and keeping it compact. You know there's a lot of musicians going around at this thing that's going to be on and off stage many times throughout the night so having something that's going to be uh, easy enough just to grab with one hand and off we go is going to be uh, massively helpful. Also, in regard to pedals, um, I wanted to keep it, the whole idea of this was keeping it as simple as possible, really, but getting, you know, just a small number of pedals which covered all of the ground I need. And in that respect, this is probably a little bit of an unusual inclusion. Um, it is the Kismet by Ramble Effects. Now, I actually did a demo of this last year. Sort of appreciated at the time, you know, how good it sounded, but didn't quite appreciate how useful it was, I don't think, at the time. I think it's the, the way my brain is wired to not really be able to get my head around things that are good at more than one thing. And that actually has the ability to store presets. So you can store up to four, which you can cycle through if the toggle switch is down, or if the toggle switch is up, you can actually toggle back and forth between one or two, which is what I'm going to do here. Hopefully you hear this when I'm doing the demo of the board, but preset number one is fairly gain. That's going to be my standard gain sound. Preset number two is a little bit more gain, maybe for solos, maybe for passages, which need a little bit more gain, yet to be decided, but a fantastic sounding pedal. In regard to the boost, go for the EP Booster. Fantastic sounding pedal, does exactly what it says on the tin. And last, but definitely not least, we've got the Supro Delay. Now, this is one of my favorite delay pedals. I've actually ripped these last two off my usual board, uh, just for convenience. That has all the usual uh, controls you would expect a delay to have. We've got mix, we've got the uh, time and repeat. But interestingly, which I really, really like, we have a filter control, uh, which allows you to sort of EQ the, uh, the repeats. So, as I tend to like them a little bit darker, obviously dialing that back gives you that sort of uh, just, yeah, slightly darker repeats, which allows you to have your mix a little bit higher, I guess. So, uh, right, and lastly, forgot to mention it, ubiquitous polytune, probably not the most exciting inclusion in the world, but absolutely essential. So, from right to left, we're going to have the polytune, followed by the uh, Ramble Effects Kismet. Good thing about using, uh, you know, a relatively small amount of pedals is I can actually spread them out quite nicely as well which doesn't mean I'm going to be fouling the uh, toggle and bypass controls with that. Also worth mentioning Pedal Train Mini in this case being powered by the Voodoo Labs Pedal Power 2 Plus and going to be wired up using uh, Ernie Ball patch cables. So let's have a look. As I said it's uh, not the most uh, difficult board I ever will have wired but the idea being just uh, having enough stuff to cover you know, the essential ground. So uh, also worth mentioning, the one thing that I really thought I was missing last year, looking back at the clips, is a delay pedal. Didn't have any form of modulation or delay or any of that kind of thing, but it's just a nice little sort of crutch, especially on the solos. So uh, hence the inclusion of the Supro, but uh, yeah, let's get wired up.
there we have it. As I said, pretty simple and pretty compact. The idea just being having enough stuff to get me through the set and nothing, uh, you know, extraneous, I guess. So uh, let's see how it sounds. And 
and there you have it. Hopefully that gives you some sort of insight into the thought process and actually the sounds I will be using for this gig. Obviously there were a couple of other options as well, not only in regard to other pedals, but also the Helix maybe, which uh, I know a couple of people will suggest. The reason I didn't actually go for the Helix in this instance was that it's a fairly big old unit. Maybe the HX Stomp would have been a very good option, but I don't actually have one at present. Um, but yeah, there are a couple of other options, but honestly, as I said, the, the whole kind of idea behind this is creating something that's practical and something that is very portable. You can lift up and get off the stage very quickly without getting in other guys way. It's um, not the real kind of right time to be making a statement of uh, make way for the board. So uh, as ever, thank you very much for watching. If you can actually come to the gig, please do check out uh, the details in the description box below. It's going to be a fantastic night. Last year was an immense amount of fun. So uh, very much looking forward to this year. So as ever, I've been Chris Buck. This is Friday Threatworks. Thank you very much for watching. Please do subscribe if you haven't already. And I shall see you next week for another video. Cheers, guys. Take care and I'll see you soon.